Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is going to be kind of our second installment of this uh, single It Resolves podcast. And by that, I mean, it's just me. Uh, my name's Kevin. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time to listen to this, whether you're on the podcast app, whether you're on YouTube. Either way, I do appreciate it. Uh, and I hope you guys are doing well today. I know we're getting close to the holidays, but today we got some news. Uh, we're, we're talking Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, obviously the newest set uh, that will be coming. I believe it's February 18th uh, of 2022. I think that is correct. Uh, I think that's the official release. Um, and I'm excited for this set. Uh, Kamigawa, if you didn't play back in the day, uh, Kamigawa was... One of the, in my opinion, uh, most thematic sets, um, just visually speaking, and even through the mechanics, things like that, I thought it was a really interesting set, one of my favorites, uh, and one of the most flavorful. Um, unfortunately, in practice, it was not necessarily the best. Uh, it it didn't really play out, I think, as well as uh, Wizards was expecting, and you can hear more about that from Maro and things like that on uh, his podcast, but... Uh, I do think Kamigawa posed a lot of interesting uh, kind of cultural things that was it was a really nice foundation for what we're getting in Neon Dynasty. So I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, Neon Dynasty looks like it's going to be really beautiful. Uh, if nothing else, there's some amazing artwork uh, and we've got some cards that I think we're going to be talking about today. So I do want to jump into specifics right off the bat. We're talking about the cards that have been released this week. Uh, there are three in particular I'd like to talk about, and then of course the basic land cycle, the Japanese basic land cycle that we'll talk about as well. Uh, but let's let's jump right in. Uh, we're going to start with the Planeswalker uh, that we have seen. So, uh, and I apologize because uh, because this is a Kamikawa set, I am going to butcher these names. But uh, the the first Planeswalker we have seen is Kaito Shizuki. I hope I am saying that at least semi correctly. Uh, one a blue and a black for a legendary Planeswalker. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, if it entered the battlefield this turn, he phases out. Uh, and so what that means is you play it uh, initially, uh, you can use its ability, whatever, or use his ability, and then obviously uh, phases out at the end of the turn, which just makes him really hard and, and very difficult to deal with, uh, which I think is quite interesting. But uh, for the the three abilities the first is a plus one draw a card uh then discard a card unless you attacked this turn uh now what that means is this does encourage you to be slightly more aggressive uh and with the built-in protection as well i think it really enables that i think that's actually quite a nice ability uh just being able to draw an extra card for that plus one is very nice discarding a card you can obviously abuse and use as a a benefit as well uh, depending on the kind of deck that you'd like to run this in. Uh, but overall, a very nice plus one ability, not too bad. I should also mention it starts at three loyalty, uh, just as a heads up, three mana, three loyalty. Uh, for minus two, uh, which is nice to know that you can activate this right off the bat as well, uh, you create a 1-1 one, one blue ninja creature token with this creature can't be blocked. Uh, I think that's actually one of the best uh, one of the, the abilities we're going to see most activated off of this. Um, and the reason I say that is I think there's plenty of ways that you can abuse that uh, in aura decks and things where, you know, curiosity style decks where you'd like to get a lot of damage in quickly, things like that. Uh, I think having any kind of unblockable creature uh, generator is certainly a good thing. And on a Planeswalker that also draws you a card, that just seems like very perfect in my view uh and not to mention it's only three mana that's probably going to sit at the top of the curve uh in that style deck uh and so it's actually really interesting to see that i think that could be quite a strong ability uh and very abusable now obviously there's removal there's things like that so obviously you want to keep that in mind but uh, one crucial element to this is that that one one can't be blocked but it can block uh, which is a bit unusual. A lot of times we see those one ones that come down that uh, may be unblockable, but they also can't block. Um, in fact, I played a deck earlier today that was that, but that is not the case with this. Uh, that one one can block, it can protect things, uh, and that's a very useful thing to mention is that uh, I, I think it's going to be a really interesting uh, play out with that. So I think that minus two is quite strong as well. Uh, now, minus seven, this is obviously the ultimate. You get an emblem. With whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, search your library for a blue or black creature card, put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle your deck. 
Uh, something I want to note about this, uh, not only does it enable itself, so you obviously throw that, mi that minus two out there, hopefully you can get to that emblem um, and, and then just search out a big creature with your, your uh, emblem there. But more importantly than that, I, I don't think we're going to get this, this emblem very often. Uh, the reality of this is uh, it starts at three loyalty, which means you have to plus it four times just to get to seven. Uh, and then on the fifth turn, you'd be able to to ultimate. Uh, and when you do that, I think it's it's going to be interesting. So I'm curious to see how that lands. Uh, I don't think that that's going to be seen very often, but it is a very powerful ability. I don't think the kind of deck you run this in, though, is really going to care as much about the emblem. I think the plus one is quite helpful for that deck. And I think the minus two is really where that power level is at. Now, again, that's just my opinion. Obviously, I'm sure others have different differing opinions. And uh, I, would, I do want to point out at this point that these are all just initial things that I've been thinking about. I've written down some notes, things like that. If if you ha have some differing opinion or would like to share some of yours, please share them. Please, please uh, let us know in the comment section. I'd be very curious to see what everybody thinks about that. But all in all, I really am excited for this. I think it's a, a very strong three mana planeswalker. So I'm very curious to see where that lands. All right, uh, next up, we have Atsushi, the Blazing Sky. Uh, this is two and two red for a legendary creature, Dragon Spirit. Uh, it is a 4-4. It has Flying Trample, and when this dies, choose one. Exile up to two cards from your library until the end of your next turn. You may play those cards. Uh, and the other option is to create three treasures. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I should mention the top two cards, not just any two. That is very crucial. Uh, one thing I want to note about this, uh, I, I posted this up on Instagram. Somebody mentioned the name being at sushi, uh, which I just think is hilarious. That's been stuck in my head ever since I saw that. But uh, this is a very good card, in my opinion. Um, one thing I want to mention, this is a, uh, a, a start of a legendary dragon cycle, uh, which we did have in the original Kamigawa sets. Uh, and so I'm very excited to see back. The artwork for this card is absolutely stunning. Uh, beautiful, beautiful card. I'm very excited uh, for this. The, the full art version is quite good as well. But uh, as far as this, this goes, I mean, this is just an overpowered 4-4 in my view. Uh, the fact that it's a 4-mana 4-4, already kind of on the curve. Now, obviously, over the last few years, power creep has made that kind of null and void. I think you kind of have to be above and beyond that. We saw that with things like Questing Beast in Throne of Eldraine, but a 4-4 for four, four, four with flying and trample is already quite good. I mean, that's that's a power card for sure. Uh, not to mention being in red, that's not too expensive for red decks. Um, I mean, four mana is usually where you kind of want to top out for just your basic mono red, you know, aggro list. Um, but that's actually quite good uh, just on its own. Now, <clears throat> the great thing about this is, of course, when it dies, you get something else. Uh, and and obviously that's going to fluctuate a little bit. I think the the beauty of this card is in that first exile, the top two cards of your library. Uh, now, obviously, that's hit or miss. You don't know what cards are going to be getting. It could be just two lands. Um, but I think the important thing to note there is that that gives you an extra couple of cards that you're then able to play uh, in a mono red list, uh, which I think is very crucial. Um, now, obviously, if you're not playing in a mono red list, you might find some usefulness in that three treasure tokens. And even in a mono red list, you might find some usefulness if, a, if it's big red or something there. But uh, regardless, both of those abilities are quite useful in my view. Uh, and again, not a whole lot to say other than I do think this will see some very strong play. Uh, it is at mythic rare, so you're you're going to have to spend some wild cards on it. But it's a it's a powerful 4-4, four, four. Uh, one that I'm very excited to play with. And uh, while I don't want this card to die, I think it's nice that uh, on that death trigger, you do get something in return. Uh, which just kind of keeps you moving forward. So very happy to see it, Sushi. I'm very excited to see the rest of that dragon cycle. I think it's going to be a very interesting one. Uh, and we'll see. I th I'm curious to see what the mana cost for each of them ends up being, because four mana doesn't seem terribly expensive for me. Uh, and so I'm very curious there. But all in all, uh, fantastic 4-4. Four -four. I think this is going to be great. Now, lastly, uh, this is the third card that we have seen spoiled, and this is actually a cool one because it's an arc back to uh, some older cards here. But uh, and again, I'm I'm so sorry, I'm going to butcher this name, but Hidesuku Sugu, 
uh, Devouring Chaos. I, I'm so sorry about that, but uh, this is also a four mana four four. It's three and a black for a four four. Uh, legendary creature Ogre Demon. Uh, very interesting abilities here. So you can pay a black, sacrifice a creature to scry two. Uh, I think that is a very good ability. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, you can also pay two and a red, tap it, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. When you exile a non-land card this way, it deals damage equal to the exiled card's name, exiled card's mana value, excuse me, to any target. Um... Now, there's a lot to unpackage here. First and foremost, let's let's start with that sacrifice ability. There's a couple things I just want to note about this. Uh, first and foremost, yes, you do have to pay a black to do it, but you can do it repeatedly. Uh, this doesn't it, it's not just like a one shot deal. You don't have to tap him uh, to use this ability, which means you can sacrifice as many things as you'd like. Continuously scry really fix the top of your deck if you're just in a position where you need to do that. Um, sacrificing a creature, as we all well know, uh, is actually a positive uh, in a lot of cases. Uh, and so I, I see that as a very powerful ability. And for only one mana, that's quite good. Now, we've seen in the past, obviously, just sacking a creature on its own is usually the cost of the ability. So having that one mana tax there, I think, keeps you from abusing it too harshly. But uh, it's not that expensive to do. So uh, I'm very excited to see that ability. I think that could be quite good. Um, now, moving to that second ability, because there is a lot there. Uh, three mana, tap it, and you get to play the top card of your deck, essentially. Uh, one thing to note, three mana on top of any spell is a significant tax, um, and it is a one-shot deal in this case. So you can only do it once, unless you have a way, of course, to untap him. Um, three mana is a fairly significant tax, however, you have that scry ability in tandem with this. So you can fix the top of your deck, then utilize the ability to do whatever you need to do. Now that might be play a land off the top of your deck. That could be play some big mana spell. It could just be you know you, know you need to deal a lot of damage, and so you, you fix the top of your deck to do that exactly that. Uh, and so this really enables itself in such a strong way that I feel very strongly this is going to be a very, very good mid to late game uh, finisher or board control kind of card. Uh, so I'm very excited for this. I think it's going to be quite good. Um, that damage goes to any target, uh, not just a creature or planeswalker or uh, player. Uh, and so it's flexible on top of everything else, <laughs> uh, which is pretty astounding. I think that's uh, very, very strong. Uh, and again, just shows off some of that power creep. Again, four mana, four, four with these abilities. Yeah, you do have to spend some mana, but uh, it's certainly worth it. So I'm, I'm actually very excited about all three of the cards that we have seen so far. Uh, I think they're quite good. Now, something I do want to mention about, uh, and I'm not even going to try, but Devouring Chaos, uh, our new Ogre Demon here, uh, is that they have neon versions of the card uh, to to kind of build off of the neon dynasty. Uh, there is like a purple version, a red, a, a green, a blue, and a yellow version, uh, all of which are beautiful. Um, same artwork, just with different neon kind of showcase frames, uh, which I'm quite excited about. I think that's actually kind of cool. It's a nice way to kind of play into the neon dynasty uh, side of things, and I'm excited to see this on some other cards if that is uh, the case. Now, to get those, I think I, I'm I don't want to don't want to to provide misinformation here, but I believe from what I have read, uh, they are going to be very low pull rates and collectors boosters only. Um, Again, that might be a mistake, so please correct me if you know differently uh, in the comment section. I'd be very uh, appreciative of that. But they are beautiful cards uh, and very excited to see those there. Uh, now, really quick, we'll finish up with this. There are some uh, Japanese art lands uh, or, or styled lands that will be available in this set. I think they are stunning. There's, I believe, two of each. Uh, I absolutely love all of them. I love new new basic land styles. I always think that that's going to be a big sell. Uh, and I think that that just provides that little extra value. I think it uh, it makes each pack feel a little bit special, even if you don't necessarily get the pull you might be looking for or something like that. So uh, very happy with that. They're, the artwork is absolutely beautiful. And again, I should be able to show those on screen if you're watching over on YouTube. So. Uh, all in all, uh, a great start to uh, to Neon Dynasty. I think a great start to the showcase. I think um, 
we've got some powerful cards to lead off with. Uh, very excited to see what the rest of the set holds. Um, I think the excitement around a new Kamigawa set is quite high from what I have seen at least. Uh, and so to, to see what specific cards we will be getting into over the next couple months here is going to be quite interesting. <clears throat> um, and again, I, I'm very happy with these. So hopefully you guys enjoy these uh, and we should be able to do some more of these kind of showcase style videos where we just talk about some of the new spoilers every once in a while, uh, I hope. Uh, and if I if I don't get another video out anytime soon, just because of the holidays and that kind of thing, I just want to say I wish you all the absolute best over this holiday break. I hope you guys enjoy some family time, things like that. And uh, hopefully we'll see some more from uh, Neon Dynasty over the next couple weeks. So we'll keep you posted there. But thank you guys so much for listening. I do appreciate it. Uh, again, wish you all the best and we'll talk again very soon.